Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I do greet you in the name of the Son of God. That name is Jesus Christ today. A lot of people scared to come outside. Oh, wow. The, the COVID-19. Quarantine. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. True saints of God don't operate in fear, but of faith. Knowing this, that the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Lord willing, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there, but I'm out here. Amen. For now. And let's get into the word as I'm led. Amen. Looking to have church where two or more are gathered together in my name. There he is in the midst. Amen. It's not about a big crowd. You see those mega churches falling down. Amen. But nevertheless, uh, 1 Timothy, real quick. Get your Bibles for this little study real quick. The fourth chapter, I'll start at one. It says, now the spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. And we see that. We're showing sure up in the latter times. When Jesus Christ died, it was still the last days. One day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So, the signs, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences. I mean, like Corona and Ebola. Fearful sights from the sun, the moon, the stars, and the sea and the waves roaring. Amen. And if you know the time we're in, when the sea and the waves are going to roar, get away from the coastline. Get away from the coastline, you know. I've known that for a while now. But just to give people warning, and I thank God for this location of, you know, the country, you know, to be out here closer to God. Amen. With that being said, let me continue on. Uh, giving heed to seducing spirits. My goodness, these false prophets, these sorcerers have seduced the people because they have seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're following doctrines, teachings from devils. Amen. Three gods. <laughs> Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Amen. Now here we go. Verse 3 says, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, who does that sound like? Who forbids to marry? The Catholic Church. The priest. Amen. You can't get married if you're a priest or if you're a nun. You can't get married. Well, that's speaking about you. Forbidding to marry and command to abstain from meats. When do they do that? Well, not just the Muslims. They don't eat pork. But you got these uh, Catholics. Amen. In their season called the man-made festival of lent you can't find lent nowhere in the bible amen oh well you can't eat meat during lent so they uh uh, uh before that what they have fat tuesday aka mardi gras they want to indulge in all kinds of meat before lent you know which is not even in the bible whether it's mardi gras who came in by way of a catholic influence i believe it was uh the french you had a french Canadian landed in Mobile, Alabama. They had a little party. All that come in the influence from the Roman Church, the Catholic Church. So you got the Fat Tuesday, and then leading up to another <laughs> false holiday, Lent. Can't find that nowhere in the Bible. They forbid to marry the Catholic priest. My goodness, every time you look up, them Catholic priests is always molesting young boys or even young girls. Amen. And the nuns, the only thing the nuns do right is wear a veil covering on their head. You ain't got to wear it everywhere, you know, but you can get married, find you a husband. And to the priest, uh, find you a wife, not another man. Touch a little boys. That wicked Roman Catholic church, that wicked Catholic church. There might be some sincere people, but just being sincere won't get you to heaven. You must be born again, born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. You got to have the Holy Ghost. You get that by way of the water baptism in Jesus name. Amen. And if you don't get it then, then you tarry until God gives it to you. Now, the Bible says he gives the Holy Ghost to those who obey him. Amen. Let me get, continue on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience. Matter of fact, that was verse two. I'm, I'm, I'm just going back over. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. We know that the meat, whether it's pork, if you ain't got nothing else, it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. These old religions come along, amen, like the Islamic religion. And look at Islam, scared in your own pilgrimage of Mecca. 
my goodness, it's empty. No power in these false religions, these man-made religions, amen. No power. The Vatican on lockdown. Pope on lockdown. Pope's not in the Bible. Hey, man, let's continue on. I'm going to pick up. Uh, we were talking about Lent, and that leads up also to another false uh, festival of, 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 of Easter. Hey, man, yes, yeah, in the Bible. However, East, look at, look at the word, East. They worship the sun towards the east. What did the prophet Ezekiel say? Let's, let's turn there. Easter, amen. Okay, Ezekiel, the eighth chapter, let's start at 12. It says here, Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord see of us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn ye yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There you go, Tammuz, another name of a false god. Now you look at this, the history of Tammuz, I won't get too much into it. The son of Nimrod and, and Samaritan's Samaritan mother. Well, that will relate back to the queen of heaven, if you will, and then Tammuz. It say, all oh, the women were weeping for Tammuz for 40 days. Well, maybe so, whatever. That's historical reference. But I do know this, they got their land for 40 days. That's man-made. Ultimately, the devil's behind that because he has deceived all of the nations through false religion. Amen. So you got women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east. There you go. Mommy, of Easter. East, their faces toward the east, and they worship the sun towards the east. What does that remind you of? Sunrise service. You can't find that mess in the Bible. You're really worshiping the sun. Amen. You know, uh, uh, Sunday. You know, I mean, not, not to say you can't have church. I call it the first day of the week usually, but, you know, we're in this world. We're not of it every single day of the day of the week, you know, in this uh, uh, Grugarian calendar. It's hard to escape paganism, amen, but I don't make a big deal out of it. Amen. And they worship the sun toward the east. So you got a sunrise service. Amen. You can't get three days and three nights from Friday. Say, oh, good Friday. You can't find all that stuff in the Bible. My goodness, you can't find all that stuff in the Bible. You can't get three days and three, three nights from Friday to, to Sunday. Amen. So there's another lie. You don't practice a lie. That's a willful act of sin. And these fake Catholics and fake Baptists and any other fake denominations, denominations is man-made anyway, are teaching this mess. Easter eggs and all this old foolishness. And you see how the politicians have Easter egg hunts on the White House lawn or whatever, you know, whatever, you know, but that's what the people want. They're doing this in the church, Easter egg hunts. Why do they use the egg? Because in paganism, it usually represented fertility. The same reason why they, they use the rabbit. Oh, they multiply real quick. You know, they have babies. So the same reason that Hugh Hefner used the Playboy Bunny. Hey man, you ever thought about that? Because it represents fertility. Now, whether it was Hugh Hefner or whoever, it still uh, goes back to Satan at the end of the day. Amen. This sensual foolishness that goes on amen so the prophet ezekiel already had that covered amen but nevertheless let me turn right to say oh well easter's in the bible well look it's not held in a a, a positive context well it was passover well hold on hold on let's, let's let me let me read the scripture acts the 12th chapter now about that time herod the king stressed forth his hands to vex certain of the church Man, this guy was an antichrist. He's vexing the church, the body of Christ, the church of God, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's vexing them. He must have been an antichrist. Now, this was the same Herod who was eating the worms because he didn't give glory to God. The people said the voice of a God and not of a man. And he didn't give glory to God and he was eating the worms. You know, he was a, a, a devil. Amen. The same Herod. And he killed James. Now, James was a Christian. He was a follower of the way, a follower of Jesus Christ. The brother, he, that was the brother of John with the sword. Let me keep going. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. 
Then were the days of unleavened bread. So if you know the Jewish festivals, and you can't judge us if we don't uh, observe the Jewish festivals, amen, if we don't want to, because you let nobody judge you with a festival or holy day or new moon or Sabbath. No, you can't judge us on that. That was just a shadow of things to come. But notice it says, then were the days of unleavened bread. When he proceeded further to say, Peter, then were the days of unleavened bread. So you know the days of unleavened bread, before that, you had the Passover. Amen. Which rep represented when the Lord passed over. Amen. And the instruction were given that they get a lamb without spot or wrinkle, you know, a pure lamb. And that was to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Amen. And when the, the, the destroyer passed over, he would see that blood and he would pass over. So you have the Passover feast where a lamb was sacrificed and ate first. And then came the days of unleavened bread. Amen. So see that in parentheses. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squadrons of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. They say, oh, that's Passover. Well, it really wouldn't make sense, to be honest with you. The King James Version of the Bible was correct. Why do we say, oh, well, you don't have to go to the Hebrew, Hebrew and to the Greek. But then when it comes to the Hebrew and the Greek, you, oh, so you say, well, yeah, yeah, that means Passover. Pacha, whatever. You know, come on now. Look, the Bible says what it says for a reason. After Easter, that's because you have Passover, which had already happened. The days of unleavened bread. And then you have that pagan festival that they've been celebrating for thousands of years called Easter. Where somebody like Herod probably celebrated. Why? Because he was in bed with the Romans. The Romans is the one who uh, set up Herod. He didn't get that job. Man, this was political. And you know how these politicians have Easter egg hunts on the White House lawn. So think about it. He was a wicked politician, and you see he was an antichrist. So look here. The King James Version of the Bible is right. And a lot of preachers haven't been able to uh, understand why it said Easter. It should say Passover. Well, well look, whatever the case is, I, I'm going to tell you this. Easter is in there for a reason. But am I going to celebrate it? No. Churches recognize the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's do it every day, though. You know, if you want to have a special day for the resurrection or call it resurrection day, fine. But leave that Easter mess alone. Easter eggs in the, in the house of God is an abomination. Amen. And let me get right here to uh, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. And I'll start at 3. It says here, for the time past of our life, we suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. My goodness, we was living like the Romans, having Saturnalia festivals and, and worshiping Tammuz and and, and, and Diana and all that weird stuff through these man-made holidays when we walked in lasciviousness all kind of partying like Mardi Gras my goodness they got hazmat suits they had hazmat suits with corona beers in their hand and, and you see how that coronavirus done broke out in Louisiana making a mockery my goodness uh, uh, contrary to you can't be a drunkard amen you can't uh, walk around in a, a fornicator amen and you see what was going on in the Mardi Gras now you, now you look how it broke out they walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Mardi Gras, Lent. It's the abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of rights, speaking evil of you. So you want to talk about people who are trying to live holy because they don't go to Mardi Gras and, and uh, Easter egg hunts and, and, and uh, exchange uh, presents on Christmas because we don't do that. We don't go to the bar no more. We don't you know, uh, do all the things that the world is doing, but you want to speak evil of us because the Bible says the way of truth is evil, evil spoken of because everybody's following the false prophet, the false preacher, the false teacher, Joe Osteen and them. Let me see, uh, skip down to verse 7, 1 Peter 4 and 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So don't tell you just to pray, but you got to watch. Be aware of your surroundings and pray. Amen. The fervent uh, prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yes, we should be praying, amen. I do thank God for the word. Amen. Just wanted to give you a little something, something. Amen. Because we're not out here in the spirit of fear. We go where we want to go, you know, if the Lord wills. If the Lord wills, we'll do this or that. So all y'all boasting and bragging, where you going to go? Why don't you say, if the Lord wills. Be blessed.